And you, you started building a house. You you'd met Dorothy. Yeah. And you. Now, you yeah, when I met this Dorothy, and she was a, a nice girl, and um, so I, I went away. I knew her before I went away, and then when I come out, um, bikes so and we met up, and we got together again, and. Uh, I had a, a, a place in East Ham and I sold that. And with the money that I bought, uh, this plot of land off, off of me mate of mine. So I got you know, extra, extra cheap. And um, and I had to build it. So I was, that's when it all started. I was over there looking at the land and everything, what I've got to do, what bricks I've got to order and everything. And this fella called Ronnie Smith came over. He said, Roy, come to Barnet Fair with us. I said, no, mate. I said, I've got, I've got to sort this out. I'm going to try and build a house on there. Five bedroom Shelley bunk like it was. I said, then I'll need to go get some duck. He said, Well, I can't buy on it fair with me, he said. Uh, fight with the, with the gypsies. Oh, and that's where it all started from, you know, fighting the gypsies and everything. That's when I was getting the money from that. As I was getting the money from that, I was sticking it in the uh, into the house. And so you, you started doing these these boxing fights. I mean, what what is the uh, sort of appeal of the unlicensed boxing? Is it, is it just the money or money, is it? Money, yeah, that's it. Money. Right, and and so you you fought Donny the Bull Adams, and, and what about some of the other fights? You fought, is it Mad Dog Mullins? Mad Dog Mullins, yeah. What well, was he was like? a he was a little Irish geezer. I didn't know he was a little Irish geezer. He was all I knew was an Irish geezer, and so we, we had to meet with him up at um, say Tottenham Court Road. Was uh, Tottenham Court Road. He was in this pub waiting for him to come in. It's packed out with loads of geese all of a sudden. I said, well, where's this Mullins coming in? Where's this Mullins? So this little fellow walks in, he said, hey. I said, where's this He said, I'm, I'm Mullins. I knew Mullins. And they were sticking up 20 grand on him, you know, to win a take all. It was a, they, you know, they was, um, he was supposed to be a pretty good fighter. So I went, all right. But I don't know if you've ever seen on on, on the tape, as we're in the, uh, the place, Getting warmed, get, getting warmed up. He's in there skipping, and all sweat's running off him. And about warmed up, he, he daggered himself if I got in the ring. So when I got, in, I couldn't believe it. And I just, I done him in about, I think it was two rounds, three rounds. So I just want to go through some of your fights here. Uh, I've got down. Is it Terry Hollingsworth? Hollingsworth, yeah. Any, any good? Well, he was um, ABA champion, tall, and I thought, I oh, know, I'd already injured me nose. I thought I'm going to be in trouble here. But uh, it didn't, I didn't know, his tool was shot out of left hand, and then he crashed, 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 over he went. And I couldn't believe it, and then he got up and I whacked him and got over he went. It was, it was finished in no time at all. And that was when the take call. Did, did you think you were as, I mean, were you surprised that you were that good and the victories were that quick? Or were you just totally confident? No, I've that? always been, um, you know, even as an amateur, I've been, I've been uh, you know, top of the tree, I was always, you know, at the top of the tree. Uh, and then, then of course, we're supposed to, we do have to go on the, the the name that everybody goes on about, of course, Lenny McLean, and you, you you beat him in that first fight. Was it the first time that you saw him was when he came into the ring? No, no, we had, there was a part of mine had a pub up at um, Hoxton. Uh -huh. At Hoxton, he had a pub in Hoxton. And McLean used to go in there with his mates and drink. And then when it's the right time, time, he said, no, that's not right, we're having a late one. Well, no, we we'll come on, and he, and he would stay there, and he'd done it night after night. So my mate came on, and he said, uh, "I've got this geezer, Roy. You know, do some folk, you know, uh, uh, and get him out." I said, "All right." So I said, "About this Saturday." So I went up this Saturday, and I don't know if you heard about it or not, but um, he, he didn't, uh, he, he didn't appear in the pub that night. So I went down the pub that I know that he works at, the what are in um, Stepney, you know, he minds the door there. So I went down, and there was all that trouble up there. He said, I said, keep out of the pub, he went, all right. I said, and uh, he said, I heard, I heard you want to have a fight with me. He said, yeah, I'll have, I'll have that. I went, right, I'll we'll get it on. Win a take call. And that was it. So um, that's how it all started. And, and take us through the, that first fight. Was you know What was it like for you? Was it was it a good fight, easy Yeah, fight? Well, no, no. Well, I, I trained hard, hard, hard for it. And um, I was fit, as fit as you know, anybody could be. And then when I got in the ring with him, you know, it shook me the size he was. He, he was a big lump, and they had trouble getting the, the gloves on his um, his hands. And so um, I thought, all right, I worked to his body. You know, weaken him. 
because it had been so big and tall on it. So I said, well, I went, and I can tell it was a Jen Ackman and Jack O'Allen was there as, as guests of mine, you know. And I was on there and I was smashing away at his belly. And then he, said, and he, and he was going, look, you can't hurt me. Well, anybody can stand there when you're hitting him. I was like, put one on his chin and that stopped him. And I just kept going in, you know, crashing away at him. And it, and it hit me a few times, but there wasn't um, damaging punches. You know, they was hurtful, but they wasn't damaging. And, and one time I even dropped my hands and let him hit me. So it just shows that, yeah. Uh, what the story I said, the, 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 the next time that he dummy that I was on that James thing, that backs the story up. Because how comes he can hit me one night and I don't go over and another night I hit me and I fall all over the place. So uh, anyway, I'd, I'd done him in free, I just kept walking through and whacking him. And when I went back to the ring, not your pal and, and that jacker on, I said, let him do some work, let him do some work, because I was attacking all the time. Well, that ain't the way I fought, so I went in the third round and just smashed him. And then, and in the end, he went, tell him to stop it, Roy. I said, what? Whacked him again, he went, tell him to stop it. So that's it, he wanted the referee to stop it, so I put my hands up, I won the fight. Uh, and did that give you any special satisfaction, or was it just another fight to you? Just another fight. And, and what, what about then the return? So there was this story about the ginseng, and is yeah. that, that valid? It was really... Yeah, I was going up to with Alfie Atchison to, um, to, to the fights, and we stopped off, off at this... Uh, play Elf Shop and I said, well, have you got any ginseng? They went, yeah, and they, I was thinking I wanted the capsules, but they kept bought a bottle. I said, you got no capsules? I said, no, I'll leave the bottle right. So I took the bottle and I drank half a bottle in it while I was um, going up there thinking I'm going to be like Mary Mountain Dean, but uh, it, it don't, you work some reverse. They were saying, you're all right. I was all relaxed. I was saying, yeah, lovely. Because I was all sedated. Lovely, yeah, I felt lovely. I wasn't burning no nervous energy up when I think. And they said, well, you're next on. So I was generally getting another warm-up, but I went, I said, I'm wrong. I said, I was lifeless, I couldn't, couldn't do nothing. I even tripped into the ring, everything, I was the right state. And obviously I went out and they knocked me out. It was a, uh, and had you done the same preparation and everything? Yeah, yeah, I was fit, 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 yeah. Because I knew he was a big lamp and, and uh, you know, I, I expected the ring was already done in once, so, you know, there's no way that I thought he could have do me again, do me anyway. And uh, was that your first defeat? Yeah. And how, how did you take that? Well, it's the uh, it's the name of the game, isn't it? So you win some, you lose some. You asked for a rematch, though, didn't you? Yeah. And but, you, that, you did the rematch. Yeah, and that was it. And then I, uh, like a plonker, I took a bit of my knee. And, and that um, works exactly the same thing. But what I did, I took four, four capsules, 1,000 units, in the morning. For thinking that it'd be in my system, and it'd be out by the night time, but it wasn't. It was still there. And if you see, if you watch the video, in all my fights, that they, they had that um, mommy, you know, uh, come on, come on, leader of the gang, it's called or something. And um, and I'm I'm alive, you know, jumping, come on. But it, it sees me. I just come down the stairs. I got it going, and you can see it looks like I just got out of bed. I went like that, so. Uh, do you, do you ever, would you have liked to have fought no, him again? To yeah, him? I challenged him and challenged him. But I even challenged him on um, television. What was it? Uh, James Warren. Was it Gary Bushell? Or? Gary Bushell show, yeah. 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 He, it, he wouldn't? He wouldn't have it, no. I think he um, he was, was trying to get fit, because one day when I was out, with a, they must have told him that I'd run up this hill, and it is a fierce old hill. And I was out with the dogs, and I saw someone running and stopped walking, and I looked at him, and it was, it was McLean. So I think he was just testing out how, how fit I was, or if he could do the same, get, get as fit as me, I don't know. But anyway, you know, I can't, you know, silly talking about him now, because he's yeah. dead now, you know, he can't sort of come back. But I challenged him. I went to, a, a, what do they call it, a charity thing for um, his, his uh, cousin's son who was nicked in Spain or something, they wanted to get some money for him. So I went at a place in Stepney, and he was in there, and I said, keep calling yourself to go, and I said, me and you will get it on together. Come on, I said, what I want it. So he went, Roy, oh, so I'm too old for it now. I said, too old for it now? I said, I was as old as you when I, when I beat you, years ago. And he went, oh, no, I wouldn't fight no Roy. And he said, well, me to take you out of that club, because he looked like a club up there. And it was nice enough to, you know, to, to me and whatever, but he wouldn't fight me, and that was it. 
Do, does that kind of annoy you that that he did the two victories? To yeah, the oh yeah, of course it does. It's just a one blight in my life, and it's, it's it's a big hurt to me pride, aren't it? Like, what is what makes it hurt more? If he beat me properly, officially while I was fit, then, then you know I've got nothing to say. I've been beat, but I wasn't proper, and he and he's he's got he got. I, I'm already be, by beating me, named the governor and made a big fuss of him, but he, he wasn't really the governor. Right. Did, did you feel, I mean, like, there was, uh, Cliff Fields was a great fighter, wasn't he? Did you yeah. feel he was one of the best? Oh, he was the best, yeah. He, he better was... than the two of you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have fought, I wouldn't have fought Cliff Field. He was a big natural everywhere. I'm a middleweight. He was a big natural everywhere, and he would have, um, he done, he done the knock the clean out twice. Johnny Waldron knocked the clean out twice. And being that he wouldn't fight me, so I thought he's, that bloke he fought Kevin Paddock. Kevin Paddock beat him, so I thought, Kevin, and I, I think that was my last fight, Kevin Paddock. So, and, and you, over the years, always tried to get Lenny back in. For the yeah, room. yeah. That's a shame. What, what about um, we've got uh, Harry Starbuck down? Yeah. What was that like? Well, really, he had about fourteen fights and fourteen knockouts, and I went and saw one of his fights, and I thought, well, he ain't that special. So we we um, laid on, but I was, you know, good night to say against him. He was a a lovely, lovely man, and uh, but I never had much to do with him before the fight, but after the fight, you know, I went out and knocked him out the first round. But um, I went into it afterwards. I said, uh, "Are you, are you going?" Roy Harry went, "Yeah." I said, "Sorry, I had to, I had to end like that, but that's the name of the game." And that's all right, Roy. I said, "How much did you earn?" Do you know he said, "It's the most I've ever earned, Roy." And he shook me hand, and, and he's uh, a nice, nice bloke. And and uh, was, was it Lou Yates? Was he the yeah. last one that you fought? Yeah, I think it was it was Old Rim or um, Paddock. Paddock, yes, Old Rim or Paddock was the last. I think Paddock oh. was the yeah, Paddock was the last one. Right. Sorry, yeah. And I had a uh, yeah Lou Yates for yeah. And what were those fights like? Well, you know, he wasn't um, wasn't up to much. I'd done him in three rounds. Right, uh, and of course the Ron Stander was was an amazing fight. Yeah, he was the one. Yeah, was it? With the Joe Frazier and everything like that. So, who, who would you say out, out of those? I mean, was it ten fights that you had? That, or, I suppose I don't, I, something like that. Uh, um, yeah, it was about ten. Yeah. Who was who was the toughest opponent? Oh, about that stander. And and so Lenny doesn't rate up. There, no, but... not at all. No, I took all these punches on the chin in our first fight. Uh, it, it was nothing special. Mm-hmm. Well, it just shows you got knocked out twice by Clifford, twice by Johnny Waldron. Beaten on point by Kevin Paddock. So, uh, you know. And, and these were people that you'd beaten. Yeah, I've been with them now anyway. I mean, one of the big things that they've got in, in Kate Cray's book is this thing where you, you went into a club as a VIP and then the next week they wouldn't let you in. Tell, tell us about yeah. that. Well, that's up at um, Romford. Club up there, and uh, I went in there when the first night opened. Hello, Roy. Hello, Roy. Took me up to the VIP lounge, made the right fuss of me, fuss of me. But at that particular time, the police, believe it or not, were going around to different club pubs, say, don't let Shaw in your place. I said, well, he's one of the nicest blokes I'll get. No, he's a troublemaker. So I even went up to the police station and uh, spoke to them. I said, don't start singling me out and giving me assament. They said, we're not Roy, we're not. I said, well, you're trying to bar it with these clubs, all right? I ain't done nothing wrong, I, I, and I, I wasn't a troublemaker or nothing, I had no fights for ages. But I went to go and, uh, so then I went to go back in with, um, I had a girlfriend with me in, in there this time, and um, they barred me. So now you can't come in, and all of a sudden one of them stuck his head on me, so we, we started having a fight, you know, all, all the bouncers. And I was standing, I was whacking them, they was whacking me, and it was a, a fair old thing, but anyway, in the end, I was working, and they all run in, run into the, 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 the their doors, the big glass doors, and, and shut the door. So I thought, well, I got to have them. So I went home and got a, an hammer. I thought I'd come back and do them. So I waited by the dustbins. And I put the hammer over, over there out of the way. And um, so the, they, they must have seen me because the, all the place, the place was flooded out with, with, with police cars. So I was sitting there, all tucked up by the dustbins out of the way. And there was some, one, one of the, the vans come right in this, because uh, they was all looking, he must have gone over there, over the, over the wall. And you know, I got a bit like a big car, park, car parking place, and the wall, they thought he must have got over the wall. 
But anyway, this car I went right round and come right round it, and in front, he's got his headlights right in front of me. And I went, all right. <laughs> and they were coming, getting older men. That I think they thought I was armed or something. They um, rubbing me down and holding me. So what's the trouble? I had a, a few bruises on me. And I said, would I come back to do them? I said, they done me. And some one of one of the cops said, who's that? Was this for? I said, where did you find that? He said, over there. I said, well, I'm over here. And I, I don't know. And that was it. So I went down and walked past the, the big glass where there was. I said, I'll be back. So about four days later, I went back and they wouldn't open the glass doors. And uh, But the next thing you know, they called the police. So, all right, just throw it, let it go. Well, I was going to do one of them. I know he lives down in South End. He was the big fat one who was um, who tried, tried to nut me. And I waited down there a couple, um, a couple of nights, you know, it's like two, three, four in the morning. Waiting, and and it is a right little quiet street, you know. Anybody looking out the window gonna be suspicious. I'll end up getting nicked with a lump of iron on me. So I um, I, well I'd done it two nights. I was down there and uh, he never come. So I, uh, I, I knocked you on the head. Forgot about it. Is that something that you've uh, finally forgotten about? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's already done now. It's finished.